So you sat down for 24 hours and you gave it your all, but you just don't have enough points to cross a line. Chances are you're feeling a bit down and a bit unsure on what to do next. Well, that's what we're going to discuss today. Hi and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell so you don't miss any future video. So first off, congratulations on your OSCP attempt. This is a monumental exam and it's, an, and it's extremely hard. And while you might be disappointed, you've already learned so much just from t giving it a try, so good on you. So as I mentioned, you might be feeling a bit sad, a bit aimless about what to do next. You thought you were ready, but the exam was just that little bit too hard. How are you going to prepare for your next attempt? Well, that's something that I'm going to shed some light on today. When I sat my exam, I failed with a total of 55 points. But by my second attempt, I got the full 100 points in less than 12 hours, including breaks. Between these two attempts, I really changed up my pattern of study and took a new approach, which really I found was beneficial. So these are a few things that I recommend based off this experience. Firstly, make sure you've done enough machines. It might sound obvious, but doing the PWK alone probably isn't enough for most people. Sure, a few people are lucky enough, but the majority of us, probably not. You'll need more time to build up that rote memory, learn common false positives, enumeration techniques, and more. So a good amount of practice is key. Personally, I did 150 machines in total but 50 of which was hacker box, and I really don't think I got a lot out of these machines. Purely because they're too niche and not really within the scope of the OSCP. However, the Proving Grounds was released just between my first and second attempt, so I immediately moved here and found the machines just so much more in the same style as PWK. Hacker box is great, but it does focus on those niche technologies and long exploit paths. Proving Ground's practice is very real world. The Proving Ground might be a bit hard at first, and that's actually a good thing. These machines tend to be around the same difficulty as the harder PWK machines, but not the extremely hard ones. But still within the scope of knowledge of the PWK and OSCP. So number two, slow down and read your notes. Contrary to what I just mentioned about doing a lot of machines, we also need to slow down and don't just do machine after machine because you can get to a point where you start to repeat common mistakes a lot and you need to have a bit of oversight and reflection on your workflow. So if you're taking good notes, which you probably should be doing by now, it's important to read over them and take notes on your notes. Look for these areas where you're falling down the same mistakes over and over. Maybe you're trying to enumerate things which just can't be enumerated further, or trying to use the same, exploit the same false positives over and over, or maybe diving into really complex exploits when the simpler ones would do. So be sure to read over all of your notes and your enumeration outputs find common false positives and see what's keeping you stuck and wasting your time. Once you fix that, you'll be able to tighten your workflow and optimize your time, becoming much more efficient. Number three, try to find the vulnerable software that was in your exam. Chances are you will not get the same exam machines again, but there's a high chance that the software that you encountered is available on ExploitDB. Simply search for the software that you had in your exam and click the has exploit tick box to try and find the version you had for your exam. Once you have it set up in a new virtual machine, keep trying to exploit it. This will give you a low pressure environment to find what you were missing in the exam. Chances are you are probably just missing something really, really simple. Number four. Read your exam notes and try to do a bit more research. So if you can't find the software that was in your exam or it's, or it's for a local privilege escalation, then you can start reading your notes and script outputs to do a bit more research. 
do a bit of research on the software, read the CVEs and exploit code, and there may even be multiple exploits. Just take your time, read through all the information and try to narrow down what you think the exploit path was. Of the 150 machines I exploited before my exam, 148 of them contain the privilege escalation vector in the Windows or Linux P's output. Sometimes it was just a bit more hidden away or not just blatantly obvious. So be sure to go through these outputs and pay attention to those sneaky areas that might hold useful information like running processes, groups, and files. And lastly, this is pretty obvious, but relax. The OSCP is a very distinctive certificate and as such needs to have a very challenging exam. So be sure to take a small break, relax, find the things you enjoy in life again, and re return to study once you're done. This will help you feel a bit more refreshed. You're not helping yourself by studying non-stop without giving yourself proper care and a proper break. Congratulate yourself on sitting the exam. It doesn't matter if you got zero points. You took the initiative and you gave it your all. All points on top of that is just simply a bonus. That's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please hit that like button. Not only does it help me out, but it helps people like you find content like this. Be sure to leave a comment below and tell me how your progress is going. I'd be really keen to hear from you. Best of luck in your next exam attempt, and I'll catch you in the next one.